So yes. I guess th this is an effort to, uh, I guess for our investors, just have them better understand kind of how your mind works right. and right. Uh, what you see, what adds value, what doesn't. So right. uh, these are just some of the questions that, that they put together. Okay. Uh, and we can all highlight a couple of them. But this okay. is, I just want to, I want to okay. put this in front of you just so you have a general idea on kind of what they're thinking. And then we can kind of elaborate and exp expand on those. About a month ago, Evan came to me with an idea. Just about anyone could host a podcast and tout their success in the real estate industry, but what does that actually look like? Agents, contractors, inspectors, property managers, and appraisers all play a key role in what makes real estate investing possible. These mainstay shorts will act as a looking glass for investors, following industry experts as they unveil their process of evaluating properties across the Indianapolis market. In part one, we interview local appraiser Mimi Truex, as she takes us through her process and what you could do that positions your property to earn a higher value. Uh, my name is Mimi Truex. I'm a residential real estate appraiser. I've been an appraiser for 28 years now, all in the Indianapolis market. I do just residential, so single family, condominiums, two to four family, uh, new construction, rehabs. I've done just about all of it. And how many of you Roughly, how many appraisals have you completed, if you had to guess? Oh, gosh. I mean, I do. I just love stumping people around here. Hundreds a year. Do you? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, lot, it's a lot. It's a lot. So you have to have a four-year degree, and um, then you have to take so many classes with the state or a, a, a national organization, but you have to get so many hours, and then you have to sit for a test with the state to get certified. And then once you're certified as a trainee, you have to work under somebody, sort of as an apprentice, for at least, it usually takes about two years at the very least to get your hours. First thing you want to do is look at the house, obviously, see how big it is, see what kind of condition it's in, if it's updated or not, the quality and amount of updates. You know, um, for instance, do you have four mica countertops throughout the house? Do you have granite and marble? You know, obviously those things play into value. Um, but your location, your size, number of bedrooms, all of those things factor in to the valuation of the subject. You know, we only make adjustments for, you know, we can't make adjustments for every little thing. Sure, sure, you know, sure. this one has a Formica countertop and this one doesn't, so we're gonna adjust for that, you know. I guess, is, is this done like a one to 10 scale or an ABC or a we hot We have cold? scales, okay. we have scales, yeah. Um, like we have quality ratings, Q1, Q2, Q3, and condition ratings, C1, C2, C3. Like C1 is new construction, um, C2 is, you know, maybe they just moved in two months ago or it was a house that was gutted to the studs and completely rebuilt. Mm -hmm. um, and C3 is, you know, it's, maybe five years old, but it's cosmetically fine, doesn't have any major repairs that are needed, you know, and then Q4, you may be cosmetically dated or need some minor repairs, you know, you got some peeling paints and things like that, you know, cracks in the sidewalk. Um, and then you go down to Q5, which obviously needs a lot of, you know, you've got a leaking roof and, you know, some missing siding and, you know, things like that. So you've got a house right, right across the street. Um, you think it's a great comp. Well, mine's a one level, three bedroom, no basement. That's a two level, five bedroom with a full finished basement. You're really comparing apples to oranges. By the time you make adjustments, it, it's, it's just gonna be ridiculous. Would you hear me with the, uh, the difference between condition and, and quality, maybe for the folks that? Certainly, certainly. So um, quality is like a, okay, what's the builder? More square foot, less money. Right. You know, builder grade, lowest quality flooring, lowest quality cabinets, lowest quality light fixtures, et cetera. You know, but you're gonna, gonna get more for the money. And then of course you look at like a $3 million home, you know, super custom, you know, you've got custom built this and custom built that and you know, everything is unique and different. And so those are, you can see just a quality difference. And then condition is, you know, if it's a new house, it's a new house. doesn't matter if you're a small ranch or if you're a multi-million dollar home, if it's in good condition, everything's brand new, it's good condition. That is one of the most difficult things I think for appraisers if they don't understand a market and they don't understand that they don't understand the market. You know right. what I mean? Um, I see that a lot because I live downtown and you have the historic districts and there's distinct boundaries and you cross one street and it can be a drastic difference in sure. values. And if someone comes down, say from Fishers, they may not completely understand that. So um, we do see that and how to get you to navigate around that ahead of time, I'm not really sure. You know, unfortunately with the lenders now, since the crash in 08, they just sort of have a list of appraisers and they have to rotate off of them. But sometimes you know, we'll find a property that's flat out just cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't mm -hmm. something that you don't need to go through and move a wall or redo a mm -hmm. kitchen or anything. It's just mm -hmm. a cheap property. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, can you walk me through kind of that, that process? I mean, is it hard for you to justify a value considerably higher than it was when this person bought it, uh, even though they're not really making any true value add? Um, if 
that's where we have to weigh in. Do we think that initial sale was a market value sale or did they get a good deal on it? Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, if they're buying it bank owned, then they probably got a really good deal on it, you know, so it's easy to to justify. But it's the banks really want to see that justification because there will times that there'll be times I will call um, a realtor, for instance, say, hey, this doesn't make sense. Everything's telling me that this should have sold for 190 and it's selling for 160. What's going on? You know, and maybe they'll say, oh, well, they, you know, something happened last minute. They had to get out. They had to sell the house. They wanted to sell it fast. So they just dumped the price. You know, it doesn't say that in the listing. Right. But if I call the realtor, they'll tell me that. So then, you know, if I've got that justification, I've got that justification. What is the improvement you see the most that people tout very highly that adds, in your opinion, little to no value to the house? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, most of, the, most of the time, what people do is they over-improve, you know, put everything in the house exactly the way they would like it. Well, it may not be the way that everybody else would like it, you know, mm-hmm. and so a lot of people aren't going to pay for it because it's not what they want. You just do the basic improvements, you know, standard appeal, you know, that's your best route. But people do sometimes are like, well, it's got a brand new furnace, doesn't that increase the value? As long as it's got a working furnace, it doesn't really increase the value. But if you've got two identical homes, one has a newer furnace, the other one doesn't, they're going to go with the one that has a newer furnace. So it's, it's more attractive to buyers maybe. But as far as adding value to us, you know, occasionally you're going to have to put a new furnace in, occasionally you have to put a new roof on, but as long as it's not leaking, it's worth about the same. Real estate appraisal is an art, not a science. Each appraiser has their own standards, thoughts, and strategies when it comes to deriving value. In part two of the series, Mainstay will dive into the mind of Mimi Truex, not just in theory, but in actual practice to better understand the methodology and process behind formally valuing real estate property.